Hello, so I wanted to play around with some gels and pastes and see what texture I could come up with. I'm just using some very cheap watercolour paper here. I actually could have done with using something a bit better because some of the thicker gels and pastes didn't react great to the paper. So here I'm just putting on some modelling paste and this is nice and thick paste and you can use it with a palette knife like I'm doing here. You can get some quite thick textures with it. And the th it's opaque when it dries. So it will be white when it dries. And I'm just etching into it here. I've got a knitting needle, just doing a few shapes just to see what happens. And I will go back on when this is all dried and use some paint on top so you can see what the effect is of that. It's quite good to use modelling paste with stencils. You get a really nice textured effect with that because it's very thick. So you really do get um, a thick layer on when it dries. And this is a stencil that I got from Hobbycraft, I think. And it's quite easy to apply because it's so thick. I've got some ultramarine blue paint here and I'm just adding a small drop of Payne's Grey ink just to darken it up a bit. I'm not that keen on ultramarine straight out of the tube. It's okay as a mixing paint but it's not my favourite blue. But putting a bit of Payne's Grey in it really gives it a nice dark colour. It's still fairly transparent even though I'm putting it on with a palette knife so I'm going to do another layer. So I want to dry this layer first. And this is without using any modelling paste yet. I want to just have a blue background to show you what it's like when you put modelling paste on top. And here you can see I'm just getting carried away in the moment of uh, painting a page. It's very easy to do. I get distracted and think, oh, this is nice paint. And uh, off I go. So you can see the difference now between just the ultramarine on the sides and that nice thick dark layer in the middle. And I'm writing down what I'm using because I always forget otherwise. I put that to one side and I'm going to and I'm going to get another piece of paper and take my next texture gel. For some reason I decided to draw in boxes to do this. I don't know why I did that particularly. And this is the sand texture gel. And again, I apply this with my palette knife and I'm trying to get a thin layer on the left and a thicker layer on the right just to show you the difference and how you can vary the thickness to get different effects. And it's hard to see on the video, but this is really gritty. You can't actually see the sand particularly. It's just a gritty texture. It's like gel medium with bits in it, basically. And now I'm going to see what happens if I just tint the sand texture with some blue. I put quite a lot of paint there. The ultramarine is really quite strong and a bit overpowering. I'm just making a few marks with this. It makes some nice textural marks. It's quite grungy looking. So if you like that kind of effect, that's great. You can scratch into it while it's wet. And this one is the Black Lava Texture Gel by Galleria. And this, I decided to give it a good old stir because it's been sat on my shelf for a few years now. And then I thought, what will happen if I just roll this, um, this stick out? That's quite good. So it dries quite clear, but you've got these 
black spheres in it so it's really gritty it's a bit like the sand texture but you can actually see the black bits in it and again I'm trying to do sort of thick areas and thinner areas and just scratching around and I'm going to tint this one as well to see what that's like so mixing in a bit of ultramarine So you can see that's quite a nice way to use it as well, get a bit of colour. You can still see the black bits in it. If you had a really strong tint, if I'd used a lot of ultramarine, it would have been hard to see the black in it, but the texture would still be there. And now I'm going to use this crackle paste, which is one step crackle. And I realised as I was using it, I remembered that this gives very, very small cracks. Even if you spread it quite thickly, the crackle gel by Golden will give you a much more dramatic effect. But this one's good for small areas and if you just want something quite subtle. So to start with here, I'm just laying down um, a layer of blue and I'm going to put the crackle paste on top and just pour it straight out of the tube. And I spread it on in quite a thin layer on there. And on the, straight onto the page, I'm going to give it a go of trying to get a thicker layer to see if I can get some deeper cracks. And again, I'm going deeper on, well, thicker on the right hand side. Now, these all need to dry for, well, I left them overnight actually, probably a few hours, depending on how thick you've done it. I think the crackle paste probably takes longer. And the next one I'm going to use is some tar gel. Now I remember getting this and thinking, wow, this looks great, but I was never really sure quite how to use it and I haven't figured it out really yet. But I'm putting down a layer of blue here. I'm trying to get quite a thick layer. Tar gel gets quite sticky and sometimes the lid sticks on and it's hard to get off. So in theory, you can just use a tool. I'm using my palette knife here. And I'm dripping it. It looks on the video like I'm scratching across the surface. I'm not. I'm holding it above the paper and I'm letting it drip onto the paper. Apart from here, now I am actually using the palette knife to apply it to see what effect that has and I'm going to try mixing it with some blue but the problem was I don't know if I use too much blue or whether this is just what happens with tar gel it wouldn't drip it just became really clumpy and I tried to get it to drip and then it splodged so if you want that dripping effect I would suggest you could try using um, something more fluid, like a fluid acrylic, high flow acrylic or an ink. Maybe just add a touch of ink to the tar gel. I will try doing that at some point and see if that's better. But it just wasn't dripping at all with paint mixed in. But you still get quite a nice shiny effect with that. Probably similar to using a gel medium really. So now I'm using matte gel and I'm just checking what I'd done with 
the modeling paste because I wanted to do a similar thing so I could compare the two things. So matte gel medium will basically dry transparent whereas the modeling paste dries opaque and you'll be able to see that in a minute. So I'm using my stencil to do a few bits there and I also put some on directly with the palette knife. If you're using a stencil I really suggest that you wipe your stencils after using any gels or pastes because otherwise they might just become all clogged up. And I'm doing a layer of blue here again so that I can use some gel medium on top and compare that with the modelling paste. And I'm adding a bit of Payne's Grey ink to darken that up for the second layer so that it's similar to the modelling paste one. I'm going on now with some thick application of matte gel through the stencil. Now to add a bit of drama, I'm going for orange, which is a nice complementary colour. Now I don't particularly like the ultramarine and the orange together, it doesn't make me very happy. But it's a good combination to use just to show the contrast. So that's all dry now. This is the modelling paste. So I'm going to put a nice thick application of that onto the blue so I can compare it with the matte gel medium. And you can see it looks really nice and creamy and opaque as you put it on. And it actually stays like that. It, it dries like that. And I'm doing the same, just mixing a bit of orange with the modelling paste. And I'm going to do an area of stencil with that too. And you can already see that's a really nice vibrant colour. So I've come back a day later, everything's dry. And you can see that the, the white modelling paste is still white. It's hard to see on those white areas at the top, but I have got some really good texture going on there. And I'm going to add some paint in a minute so you'll really be able to see better. The tar gel has given some nice, really shiny streaks. Some good texture going on there with the matte gel medium, which you'll be able to see a bit better later. But you can already see in comparison with the modelling paste, the matte gel medium has dried clear on the left hand side. Whereas the modelling paste has stayed white and opaque. And also the modelling paste is much more vibrant with the orange. So it just depends what effect you're going for really. And here, this is where I wish I'd use better paper for this one because particularly the black lava texture gel has made the paper sort of go all crinkly. But it does give a really good texture. And I don't know if, how well you can see that crackle paste. The cracks are really small on that blue. 
and they are better on the right hand side and you'll be able to see that in a minute when I add some paint. So for this part I'm going to use fluid acrylics just because it's a bit easier to spread and sometimes it's just easier to see when you've got a more liquidy watery layer. So I'm adding a bit of water to it. And this is the sand medium. And it is a bit hard to see in this video, but that gives a really nice, quite subtle, grungy texture. And I'm going over the black lava here. And you can really darken it up just by adding more paint. So adding some more blue to that area that already has the blue, you can it just makes the black sort of disappear really. And I'm going over the crackle paste here and that gives oh, gives a really nice effect but it is hard to see and on the thicker bit gives a much better effect but like I say if you get the golden crackle paste that's really more potent and you get some really good deep cracks with that back to my matte gel medium now that is good if that's what you've got you can really use that for texture and get some really nice effects with that you can dab away with a tissue or a wet wipe so that the pigment stays sort of between the cracks I'm just going to use some orange now on top of where I'd put the gel medium and I'm using the same stencil and I've got it in the same place hopefully so that it's going over the same areas or you can just paint straight on with a paintbrush So it's quite subtle and not quite as vibrant as the modelling paste one. So let's see what happens when we go over the modelling paste. That's quite a similar effect to the matte gel medium so far. I find the modelling paste is better if you want something thicker and more textured. And again, can wipe off with a wet wipe. This is the thicker layer of modelling paste where I was trying to create some thick areas with my palette knife. And it acts as a kind of resist to the paint, which is why it's so easy to wipe off where the modelling paste was and you end up with the paint just on the paper, if that's what you want. And then I can go over with a bit of orange just to create some drama. Now this is really good, actually, when you scratch into your modelling paste while it's wet. And then you can then you can get some paint into those cracks just by you keep putting some in and then wiping off the top bits but if you keep doing this sort of thing then you end up with the paint in the cracks Going over just with 
pure orange paint there. Takes a while to figure out which part of the stencil I was using. It all looks the same. But actually it's defined enough that I didn't really need to use the stencil. I could have just painted over the white bits quite easily. So just a quick comparison again between the matte gel medium and the modelling paste and it depends whether you want to go for drama or for something more subtle. So while I had my orange paint out there I just decided to have some fun with it and add a bit of orange to some of these little pieces and maybe I'll use them in collage. Like I say I'm not really that enamoured with that particular blue and orange together but I could always glaze over with a, another colour or just cut it up do anything really can't you so yeah I was just having a bit of fun there So I hope you enjoyed this texture video and I hope it gave you some ideas. Um, I hope you don't all go rushing out spending lots of money, obviously. Try and use what you have and if all you have is matte gel medium then there are plenty of things you can do with that. It's just getting to know how your medium works and what you can do with it. So have lots of fun and I'll see you soon.